Today, we are bouncing back from broken with entrepreneur and CEO, Christy Collins. Hey, hey, out there, it's Lauren Powers, business and marketing coach, sharing stories of bad entrepreneurs turned profitable business owners and how you can learn from our stories to help you grow in your own business. These are real stories, y'all, so it's gonna get real spicy. Pull up, let's get it. Oh my gosh, there's so much beauty in the building. Christy Collins is here, CEO, entrepreneur, mom of three, and looks fabulous in this green, Matt I add. Hi, Christy! Hi, Lauren. Oh my goodness, you look so pretty. <laughs> thank you, you do too. Thank you, darling. And thank you for gracing us with your presence at the Bad Absolutely. Entrepreneur Studio. <laughs> okay. Um, so y'all let's dive in. Christy Collins, you have been in business for quite a while. You have ups, you have downs, you figure it out. Some do, some don't. Tell us what you do and what your actual business is. Okay. Outside of being a mom. Of that's three, a whole job. That's a whole job. So let's not forget about that. Amen. Um, I am a entrepreneur. I own a staffing company. Mm -hmm. um, staffing is my business. Okay. So I've done medical, technical, um, energy, accounting, blah, blah, blah. I could go on forever. Yeah. So you've, you've crossed multiple industries. Absolutely. Um, and the reason why you're here is because, you know, we've been friends for a while yeah. and um, just watching you grow and pivot. You've had a couple different pivots in life. You know, yes. there was a point in time we were supporting um, your ex at the time. And then you were like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do my own thing. There's been some transitions. So before we even get into the story of the business that we're going to talk about, what was like life? What was life like for you before you were an entrepreneur? Oh, wow. Because you always had, so you were like, Lauren, I was into everything. I just never talked about okay, it. Yeah. So, like, so I tell people, I feel like I've had like four lives. You might have. Uh, <laughs> I know for real. Um, I've been in the music industry. Yep. I've been in corporate America. I've been a stay-at-home mom. Mm -hmm. And now I am an entrepreneur. And you, like, that ne wasn't necessarily the path that you wanted to take because you have a degree. I do. Don't you have a couple of them? Like, you got you smart. <laughs> okay, so I, <laughs> I have a degree from the University of Georgia. Uh-huh. Go dogs. In, go dogs. In um, social work and psychology. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh-huh. And I did it for five minutes. I was about to say, you wanted to help the babies? Like, I what did. Would you? Oh, and so, you know, I would go into homes and... Um, this was a part of my clinical is I go into homes and really kind of see the most um, horrible. Yeah. You were uh, like a case, a case manager. Yes. And, yeah. and it was my like pretty much my intern um, internship. And I decided in that moment, this was not for me. Yeah. I was going to say, I don't think I don't no. see you as like thugging it out. No, going no. to go. No, I think the day <laughs> that I walked into a home and had to step over roaches, food yeah, no. on the floor that had been there for days, um, mattresses that had not been clean on the floor. I mean, it was just pretty disgusting. And okay. I was like, okay, I want to help people cause I love people and I love helping. Sure. But this ain't it. Sure. Sure. So, um, and then they didn't really make Good great money. living. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, you was money-minded back I was, then. I was. So, so um, somebody actually, actually, you know what? My first job in corporate America, I was a male girl. Were you really? I was a male girl. Like you were like a clerk, like pushing I around the little the cart? Mail. I can totally see it. Now that I can see you doing it. Can't see you being a social worker. Totally can see you pushing the mail cart. Listen, I think I worked really for cute. a staffing company. Oh, you did? Yes. Oh, that's cool. And they okay. put me in a um, a staffing firm that yeah. was nothing but white males. And the only two black chicks in the whole place, yeah. we pushed the mail cart. Oh, how yeah, apropos. We, right. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. And so I'm watching these guys make like hundreds of thousands of dollars. Oh, staffing people. Staffing people. So the when staffing was, company put you with a staffing place to work. Yes. Oh, shit. Okay. And they were making like anywhere from $500 to $100,000. And these like 20, 30 year old guys. And I'm like, Ooh, it's like that. That's all do. you got to do. I'm giving them mail, right? And I'm watching them make uh -huh. all this money. Mm -hmm. I was like, I could do that. I, could do I that. didn't know this is how this started, Christy. It is. Wow. So okay. anyway, I got one more thing. <laughs> I 
stole the recruiting book. Awesome. <laughs> I stole the recruiting book. Smart. Now, this was one of the uh, largest recruiting companies, and it was mainly IT. It was Matrix okay. Resources. Okay. So I've never told this story I'm about to say, out loud. girl, you done I, told. Okay, so. <laughs> She's dropping down. I, I think we're um, past the statute of limitations. <laughs> right, so. right. I stole the book, mm -hmm. which was probably, ooh. Oh, no, you're straight. <laughs> okay. Which was about the yay thick. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I'm like, I'm going to learn how to become a recruiter because I want to make money like that. That's awesome. And, yeah. And so I took my resume and doctored it up and mm -hmm. pretend like I was a junior recruiter coming from one of the biggest. Because he worked there. Staffing yeah. companies, right? And I went to a mom and pop and they believed it. Oh, that's how you got your first gig. <laughs> That is the best story ever. <laughs> you lied. lied. You lied on your resume, <laughs> stole property Stop. to learn, and was like snooping to see how these people make all this money. And that's how dreams are are born, right. just from that instant. And yeah. I went from making like $10 an hour yeah. to probably making $125,000 at like 20 years old. 20. Oh, you were, you were like pretty fairly recently graduated from school then. Yeah. Like, no, that wow. was my first real job out of college. Wow. So, okay. So that's where this uh, love of connecting people to find great jobs started from. Well, it actually told me, hey, Christy, you know what? You can make money in your sleep because I started to build this bench of people that mm -hmm. worked for me for, and for every hour that they worked, I made money. So, you know, the type of uh, recruiting that you do, a lot of us may not be may not know what that is in the most formal sense. So if, in case you guys didn't know, there's a whole business of staffing, right? And it's not so much a recruiter getting you an interview. It could be you working for the recruiter. It could be numerous types of setups. Why don't you let us know what your setup is and how you thrive as a staffing firm? Like, so educate us. There are several different aspects of recruiting. So mm -hmm. you could be a recruiter, like you mentioned, executive recruiter yeah, earlier, yeah. Um, you can actually find a person a job and it's called direct placement. And okay. you place them in that company and then they work for that company and you get a fee mm -hmm. for actually going to find that person. Usually mm -hmm. that's very specific skill set that they're looking for. So you have yeah. a good understanding of that skill set and you can, you know how to go and find those people. Then we have something called temp to perm, where they come and you actually, they work for you and they're on your payroll yep. until, a, it's like a try before you buy yep. kind of thing. So yep. you can try this person out and see, hey, oh, I like them. They work in this environment. They're doing really well. Mm -hmm. And then you get paid per hour. So let's say um, the person, you pay them $20 an hour, but that company pays you 30 dollars sure. an hour. So you're making ten dollars for every hour that they're on the clock. Um, what's great about that is, you know, you're able to kind of build this this book of business. Oh yeah, recurring revenue. Recurring revenue. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to you don't want to look at people in yeah, that way, but, I mean, but that's, that's really what the business what model is, is, right? I when you and I had talked about that, I was completely unaware that that is a whole structure of being a true staffing firm where they still work for the staffing company, but they're placed into your prac into your wherever. Yeah. And you just you make money off of their salary. I think that makes so smart. And so businesses really like that model because, one, you don't have to pay the workers' comp insurance. Mm -hmm. They're not on your insurance. Mm -hmm. And if you don't like them or something goes wrong, you just say, hey, I don't want them to come back. That doesn't sound easy, though, at all. It doesn't sound like, is that is that for you starting off, you're in your early 20s, you, were, you had people working underneath you at that age. I did. How did you even learn to manage? Like, what mistakes so, did you make then? Like, let ooh, alone ooh. now. But. Well, I think, let me tell you, I, I can tell you what my... I feel like my biggest regret is because at that time I worked for another company. So let's okay. say yeah. the spread was ten dollars an hour, then I'd get like two or three. Yeah, you weren't on the right. lower and end. And they were getting the higher percentage. So mm -hmm. all I did was bring the people in. But at that time in my twenties, um, I had these two guys come to me. They worked in the company too. Okay. It was only about four of us. And they said, Let's start a recruiting company together. Oh, so you split off. I didn't. It's, oh, you didn't. You did. That's the one regret. <laughs> she had to take a little sip. So uh, are those are those two guys like have a big business? Or? You know, I don't know. I lost touch with them. Okay. But so what they, they realized back then was having a minority woman as a business partner was uh, was advantageous Smart. for them. Yeah. Absolutely. And I was too much into partying. I was making great money. My first time. You make a hundred something thousand dollars. And I could go to sex like all the time. Like, why do I want to yeah. worry myself with doing that? Exactly. It was hard. And so I just hate that I didn't do that then because I consider what kind of generational wealth I could have really created because it was so few companies doing mm -hmm. it. And 
there was one female uh, minority woman that okay. was like dominating the industry and she owned For Apple staffing. One. I don't know if you remember that no, staffing that? company. No. She was the first female um, staffing company. I don't remember her name, but she owned Apple One and she was like on the cover of all the major magazines. Interesting, girl. I'm still on the manpower days. So I don't even. <laughs> it's Ron all about the same Ron <laughs> So she was like a competitor with all of those and she was a minority woman. And I just think. It's different now because we're promoted. I mean, I think our our culture promotes entrepreneurial shit. They do right now, right, right now. now. Yeah. And that wasn't then. Mm -hmm. And so I was being told, "Girl, you make good money. Why are you gonna do that? That looks hard." You know. And I just look back, like, look at you, what you, you possibly you, could you have. could have bet on yourself yeah. at that time. Yeah. But you know, timing is everything. It is. And um, who's to say that you would have left that comfortable job and that comfortable lifestyle to struggle yeah. to, you know, maybe they would have mistreated you. You never yeah. know. Yeah. You never know how that would have turned out. I don't think I was ready. Out. You weren't. And that is, you see how, like, to. The, the universe just keeps us together. It does. You know, and like. it brings it right back. And then it all. <laughs> get, you in, get you in check. Hold you for a little bit. Get you in check. check. And then come right back around. So you were still working for this company, making great money, learning how to staff, really. Like, learning yeah. how this yeah. could be a business. Right. You didn't jump ship. Um, stayed. I know you had a few kids. You know, what's what was uh, your growth in staffing, you know, from your 20s to your 30s? When did you start your first business? Well, okay. So there was a little bit of a journey in that. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't, I realized that I didn't want to work for anybody else early on. Mm -hmm. So my first real job outside of that experience, I went and worked for SunTrust Bank, oh, which yeah. is no longer. Yeah, yeah. And I sat in my cubicle and I worked. Doesn't seem like I, you. I hated it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it made me realize like, okay, this isn't what I want to do because I don't, you know, I don't want to grow in this company and become like this, yeah. you know, manager of 20 people. That was just not my interest. Right. So what I shifted to was consulting, which was very much like having my own business. Because, oh, 100%. Right? So yeah. what my career ended up morphing into me becoming a consultant. Okay. And I actually ended up working for some amazing companies. Like, I worked for every Turner brand that there is. Oh, wow. Well, it was Turner, so CNN. Yeah. Um, Adult Swim, Cartoon Network. What were you consulting? Uh, staffing. Like, hiring practices. Yeah. That's it. Wow. Staffing. So at the time, you um, were a consultant. So you mm -hmm. didn't jump ship because, you know, a lot of us think that, oh, it's a, I'm really good at this. Let me just open a business. <laughs> but you actually, you know, I, I know you get there at yeah. some point, but you actually had a lot of corporate training, I which I always credit my um, success in business, my corporate foundation matters a lot showing up being prepared yes. being professional and yes. timely knowing how to have you know discussions in a boardroom oh God, you yes. know like that's corporate did yeah. that for me so yeah. you had you were a cons consultant for corporate companies i was okay and the beautiful part about that is i became very responsible for myself um when you're consulting, you can always be replaced. Uh -huh. So I always had to walk in the door and create my value. Mm -hmm. And I think I became an expert of making someone feel like they could not do without me. So, oh, um, so you made yourself hey, irreplaceable. irreplaceable. Come on, <laughs> I want to yeah. be irreplaceable too. Yes, yes. So it, I it, like that mentality. It, it got to a point where. I never looked for a job. They would call me and be like, Christy, we got this major project. We need 100 people staff. Mm, Can you come back to no. work for us? <laughs> so I got to the point where I forgot how to interview. <laughs> <laughs> right, because you, you had your own thing going, your yeah. business. Yeah, and, and so, you know, a lot of these companies would call me back time and time and time again. And I knew that I was really good at it when I could sit in a room mm -hmm. with the C-suite. Yeah. And... Hold my own. That's a whole different talk track. That's a whole different like talk. I'm telling you, as a as a C suite individual, like if people are coming to me, you gotta come correct. I will poke holes in you before you walk through that door yeah. for a good uh, for a good yeah. executive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know how to hold your own, Absolutely. and I'm sure they didn't look like you either. I was the only one in yeah, the room. Yeah, I'm sure. All the time. I'm sure. I'm sure. So that part, you know, it took training, and it it was not 
something that just came natural. I had to go in and really learn how to mm -hmm. operate in that room mm -hmm. um, because it can be an in intimidating. Absolutely. So, but you have the upper hand. I You're did. the one that's irreplaceable. Yeah. You have the skill set. Yeah. And so you, uh, you know, grew that book of business for all. Like That's your own little consultant book of business, yes. right? Yes. How long did you do that? Who I did that. Okay, so the wonderful thing about consulting is that you can work like nine months yeah. and then take the rest of the time off. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I would stagger my mm -hmm. time. But mm -hmm. I did that off and on, I know, for 15 years. Okay. So from Had a few babies in there. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And I know you, um, did, at what point did you kind of take a pause back just to be mom? At any point? When I had my son. So when I got... Before I got married, mm -hmm. I told my um, now ex-husband that if I had any more children, because mm -hmm. I was going to be free at 40, right? Oh, was that, was that, was that the plan? I in these streets and now that. I think, did you have a kid at 40? I can't remember. I did. I had <laughs> you did? two by 41. I'm about to say. I'm so <laughs> I'm like, how did I do this all over? But I told my ex-husband at the time, if I were go going to be a mother again, that I wanted to be fully present mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. my children's life and that I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. And so... I did that. What? Did, how was that? Was that a good decision? I can't imagine being a stay-at-home mom. You know what? I'm not gonna shout out to the stay-at-home mom. Shout out to the stay-at-home mom. Like y'all, like, oh listen, listen. I see. That. Listen, I see you. Mm. Mm. It is a job. I will never ever say that it is not. It's a job. It is something that is not for the faint of heart. I it couldn't is. do it for two days. You know what? <laughs> I, so know, let me pour some more. Yeah, listen. Bring your cup over here, girl. Yeah, I got let's, you. Let's do this again. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to say that I enjoyed it when I did it. I was the mom who was making the baby food from scratch. Me too, girl. Um, Can't eat that stuff in the yeah, jar. Yeah, you know, and making homemade cookies. And, you know, I would... This is my personality. If I do something, I do it to the gods. Making homemade cookies. Oh, okay. I know about your parties, your this or that. <laughs> She's been fancy for a long time. I I'm ain't gonna, gonna go it there. To the umpteenth power. Yeah. So yeah. it was like I'm gonna be the best stay at home mom you've ever yeah, seen. Yeah. So you were cooking. You had activities. You I was, was volunteering at school. Mm -hmm. I, you know, played Mrs. Claus at school for my children. Yeah, I was extra. I can't. And even I threw know. the best kid party <laughs> ever. <laughs> I know. Did Did you have a horse or a pony at what? At, at any... Bella's fourth birthday. That's what I think I remember that. I remember that because our kids are the same age. So, yeah, um, all right. Horse, yeah, she, she did. It was a unicorn. It was some sort did. of pony that you put a unicorn horn on. You are a bougie, bougie yes. bitch. But you earned it. You got it. Self-made. You know. Okay. Continue. So, do you, you're a stay-at-home mom. And, um, you know, I joke about that. As a, it is a hard job. But yeah. also, too, you are a career woman. Yeah. I don't know, and I'm being really transparent, how I would feel if I was staying at home with the kids. I th I feel like somehow I would feel like my value is diminished. I it's, it's terrible to you think do. that you do. because I'm used to being a boss or this, you know, and I, I that's a that's an interesting dynamic. Like, how so, did you feel staying at home? Okay, I'm going to tell you a God honest truth. So everybody knows me knows that I'm into fashion, right? No, you I know? can't actually can't tell at all. <laughs> <laughs> that's my life. That's like my other life. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I'll never forget. And I was telling this story the other day. So I'm in this stay-at-home mom mode. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm doing the typical, just putting my hair back in a bun, throwing on some sweats, and going to the store. And the day that I realized that this is, was not for me, one of my girlfriends called me, and she goes, Hey, girl, is everything okay? And I'm like, what are you talking about? One of our other girlfriends saw you in Walmart, and she said you looked awful. Oh, my God. <laughs> Someone really called you and said that. <laughs> you, you okay? Because you had on uh, some sweats, and your hair was in a mom bun, and, and they thought she was homeless. Yeah. She was like, you, you, you doing okay? How did that make you feel? Horrible. Oh, it's like, I'm I, fine. I an, I'm at I, doing my... I had an outer body experience. Dang. I'm like, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> like, are you okay? They was concerned. They were concerned. Like, are you depressed? Oh. <laughs> and so it made me realize, like, I stopped getting up. Yeah, you got to find your way back. And that was so not me. And in that moment, it made me realize that that was not me. Mm -hmm. And although I loved being a mom and, and taking care of my children in a certain kind of way, I felt completely empty. Uh, that's uh, interesting, right? Because yeah. being a mom, it's it's so f you're so full. Like I love seeing their faces, and I mean mm -hmm. they get on my nerves. But you would <laughs> right. think that that would be all you need. Yeah, you know. Um, and there have been times where I there was a little bit of time I did stay at home. Um, and I was like, I think that the, I, you know, this nope. 
Not for everybody. Yeah, it's not for the faint of heart. So. And and then when you know that you're meant for more in other spaces, you know, when home is good, you know you're meant for more in other spaces, how do you then make pull yourself out? How do you pull yourself out of, of that and go back to a full-fledged job or business or whatever? That was probably the hardest decision for me. Yeah. Because I lost my way and I felt guilty because I wanted more. Yeah. And I didn't have what I felt fulfilled my spirit and being a mom just mm-hmm. wasn't enough for me and mm-hmm. I felt guilty mm-hmm. um, and I can tell you I had very depressing moments where I didn't want to get out of bed um, putting on makeup not this much, but okay. without makeup. Because your face is cute now. It's <laughs> cute. She looks done. good. But we weren't doing that at no, full beats. No. But some gloss or some like, you know, just doing my putting hair yourself together. Or taking time to go get my nails done. Or, you know, you sacrifice so much and you go, well, is that necessary? Where am I going? Yeah. Um, and so that that part feeds my spirit. Yeah. And now that I look at my daughter who, you know, will check yeah, me if a piece of hair is out of place. Um, who, by the way, told me to call her and let her see what was going on. Oh, so she could FaceTime yeah, make sure you look so I cute. Yeah, have to make sure I do that first. <laughs> I mean, when we do it. But yeah, anyway, um, so cute. it made me realize, like, there is more to me. And I don't knock anybody who that's what their ministry is, but my ministry is just a little bit different. But you were also full on supporting, like, all aspects of the house. Like, you know, your ex has a, had a business that you were also helping as well, which was not even in your niche or space no. so like so you're helping the kids helping you're him. helping get your your husband in law you know the, yeah. your ex-husband together where was christy right and like mentally lost. like just yeah completely lost yeah and and yeah. and with that you know i you came out of it though i did and kind of in a, a major way so we're talking like timeline here okay. like you got your kids are about the same age as mine right, are they right, mine right. are seven and ten right yours mine are, are nine and 12? eleven nine and eleven so yeah we're like yeah. we're right in the mix right right so you got him got him going there at school yeah. you know you yeah. helped your ex do his thing yeah wasn't even in your wheelhouse no, it wasn't. at all <laughs> Tru- trucking and logistics trucking and logistics it somehow is oh, where you stumbled into because you're the supportive spouse, you're all the, all that, but something's got to give. Yeah. You had to put yourself first at one point. Opportunity came. Mm-hmm. Talk to us about, you know, the business oh, that dang. grew to be the biggest thing ever. Okay, so let's be real. It cost my marriage, right? Um, because I was so unhappy. You're unhappy, and yeah. And I have beautiful children, and I don't regret it. Um, but I needed more. Mm-hmm. I wanted more out of life. Mm-hmm. And that became my obsession, Mm. Um, and that obsession led to a lot of praying mm-hmm. and those prayers at some point were answered. Yeah. I got to find yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. amazing how much I was um, talking to Rashawn earlier about how your identity is wrapped up in what you do every day, yeah. whether it be call it a job, call it whatever yeah. you want. Yeah. It's your soul. Yeah. It is you. And if you're not fulfilled, that is very difficult. I know lots of my friends whose spouses like, you know, I don't, I don't know what, I, what my next step is, or, you know, I'm not happy this. And you don't know how to wait, how to find your way out. I think everybody has a ministry. Right. For sure. You For just sure. need to figure out what it is. And mm-hmm. when you figure out what your ministry is, you should it, thrive. You thrive and it ministers to your soul. And I figured I have a couple. OK. Later on. Uh, yeah. No. Listen, fashion has always been my thing. Always. Mm-hmm. And I really haven't been able to thrive in that. So mm-hmm. at some point in life, I know it's going to come back around. You're it's going to come back yeah, around. Yeah. And I'll be like Norma Kamali, who's like <laughs> 60. <laughs> and that's what we're going to do. <laughs> Why not? I can totally Why? see that. Right. right. I am. I just know I am. Yeah. But in the meantime, what I realized about myself is my degree is in social work and psychology. <laughs> Helping people is what I do. Yeah. And so, you know, friends have said, well, you know, you could go and get a job again. People love you. And I go, yeah. But in that situation, I only help one person at a time. That's With true. my skill set, I can help multiple people mm-hmm. at a time. And so when the opportunity presented itself and I was like elated, by it because I've never done um, this new venture that I had stumbled into. When an opportunity presented itself, mm-hmm. it was like mind blowing for me because yeah. I'm like, oh wow. It was in medical staffing. Yes. So you see how we're coming back to staffing. Back so to you staffing. also hear how her voice perked up. We were like, <laughs> staffing, staffing, staffing. Because that was the, that was your your beginnings of your career. You paused to put you know your priorities in a different space. Some things we were amazing. Some things you lost. Like I know your marriage didn't make it out of that. Yeah. But now we have this opportunity yeah. 
for another staffing. Look at God. Look at God. He will just throw it right in. Will, will he or won't he is the question. <laughs> <laughs> so you got staffing is back. Now, what did that look like? Because this was COVID time. Ooh. So it's so funny. I got the phone call from a friend, and he said, I have the perfect opportunity for you. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, let me see what you got. And it was to go into a partnership. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm mm-hmm. like, okay. You know? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Doesn't even matter who it is. Doesn't yeah. matter who it is. <laughs> so, and that's okay. literally what happened. I get put into a room with a stranger, and I'll never forget um, negotiating. What does this contract look like? Because this person needs my expertise. Because they're, 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 it's a medical, tell us what it was, though. Okay. Yeah, so it's a medical us. staffing yeah. company company and this person was a doctor Mm -hmm. and she started the company and her margins were like two dollars a person and she had no understanding of the process and the business yeah so i'm like yeah yeah most don't and i'm like okay you got the framework sort of down Mm -hmm. but it's a process and you got to understand the full scope Mm -hmm. to realize the the true you know um benefits and the potential sure. of the company. Sure. So um, we get thrown into a room together, two strangers, and she's like, well, let me be back up a little bit. I gave them the blueprint. I was like... I remember this, yeah, actually. Because, yeah. like, you know, the information is free. Like, you know, everything is rinse and repeat at some point. So I can give you the playbook. This still doesn't mean you can make it, you know. Right. You can make it work. Yeah. Um. So I did. I said, hey, I'll work for you for free. Because at first they wanted to pay me. <gasps> they wanted to pay me. What did she say? She I said, said the word. <gasps> I work for I you said, for free. Let, let's drink. Jai, today. girl. Okay. It's fine. We're fine. Hmm. Yeah. We recovered. We recovered. Okay. (laughs) So I said, I'll work and show you who I am. And then let's negotiate. All right. So I put the blueprint together. Now she could have been a different kind of person and ran with it. But I'm like, I again, I know my potential. I know what I bring to the table. And you're a good person. Fine. Take it, steal it. Whatever. So um, it came down to negotiating time. And I'll never forget... We both were crying because, <laughs> like, real, real tears. Oh, no. Um, because she started the company in 2016. It is okay. now 2018. Yeah. And she's not making any money. The company is in the red. Mm. And, know that feeling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I need help. And I'm like, I know my worth. So I need at least 50% of the company. I remember that, man, you came in like, bow. Like, you <laughs> You're like, here, I see what it is. I'm surprised you didn't start with 80% knowing you. Well, now that I look back. It should have been 80%. I know, been, I know. It should have been know. at least 51. I know, yeah. But that even, Steven, don't ever work, y'all. Anybody know? Uh, there has to be a majority. It has to. There has to be. Like, and it should be the person that has the expertise. Ideally. Ideally. Mm. Right? Mm. Mm-mm-mm. Um, because you're the person that is going to understand things better. Now, does it mean that you're the smartest or that you um, know better than every... You know, all those things. But the things. operating agreement, a good one, right? And I didn't have a very good one. But a good operating agreement covers all that. Yeah, it does. You know, it covers... <laughs> <laughs> so, back to... <laughs> you know, we're back here again. again. <laughs> you know, a partnership that starting off a mess. A mess. You know, and... Yeah, so we're 50-50. Um, we're, and we're misaligned with, <laughs> with, with skills set with, you know, business knowledge. You should be 50-50. You shouldn't. 50-50 ownership is always uh, partnership bad. is always a bad idea. Bad. Even if it was with a spouse, sometimes I still don't even recommend that. With your best friend, no. there always has to be no. majority. Yeah. So we kind of covered that. There wasn't in this case because Hence the show. It's okay. And the operating agreement, you hope would cover all the things that, you yeah. know, in case they go crazy, um, yeah. in case they move, in case they just say, hey, I don't want to do this anymore, yeah. in case they get mad at you. Yeah. You know, a strong operating agreement covers all of that, but most of us don't know, don't. have the business knowledge, know how to check and make sure it's yeah. clear. Yeah. Because I can give you my operating agreement now, it still doesn't mean it's got all the things in it. It's 30 right. pages, though. Right. It's 30 pages. So, yeah, it's 30 pages. Stuff I don't understand. So, y'all are now in negotiation time. You're crying. We are literally crying. Just like a bunch of females. And I'll never forget. <laughs> she goes, I feel like you're trying to steal my company. Oh, my God. Founder syndrome. <laughs> Can I God beat, damn it. beat that one? The too. fucking <laughs> founder syndrome. Give that shit up. If it don't work, it don't work. But you doing too much. 
much. And you know that that's an actual sin. That's an actual thing. It is Founder a thing. syndrome, where you are only doing this to say that you got them on it. I'm gonna drink to that. I mean, I just my upper lip might be sweating on this, you know. Mm. Listen, because it's hot and in I, here. That makes me hot, Christy. I felt guilty. I felt guilty. Like, like you're taking I'm, her business away. I'm taking away. something away. But it's not making money. What does that it's actually mean? It's not making mean? money. A, a business, like, a, we can't give it a, the soul, a soul and make it human. Okay. We can't. That's all I'm saying. You know, we can't. We look at the bottom line. And the bottom line is red. It's red. It's red. And when you brought me in, it turned black. And do you do you know, this is a little, you know, for, for people that could be, businesses are large enough to consider an acquisition or an investment. Sometimes they come in and snatch the CEO and throw, throw, them, them, throw out. them out. Because guess what? It's been four or five years and you haven't been able to do it and you're right. asking for me now. Right. So you should be grateful that you're still here so we can turn this around together. Okay. So I'll never forget, we go into this meeting once and <clears throat> the... We, we went in with the financial advisor, and he goes, who's the rainmaker? Me. That, and he was like, your titles are misaligned. Which matters. So titles do matter, even in the smallest of businesses. And, and don't be fooled. Don't be fooled, y'all. Listen up. Even in the smallest of businesses, I'm looking at the camera now, uh, the titles that you give your key players matters. And you need to check in with those key players to make sure those titles are aligned with what they think that they're actually doing. You can't give anybody a C-level title if they're not doing C-level work. You can't say someone's a director when they don't have the skill set to be a director, oh okay? You can't call someone an executive when they ain't a goddamn executive. Drinking of that I'm one. just saying. So that's why I'm looking in the camera. Your titles matter for your key players. Oh. Align it, put a job description up by it, and that's the contract yeah. that they're held to yeah. for their job. Yeah. I've always said, call me a janitor if I'm doing janitorial work. Absolutely. As long as the, the check aligns with what I'm giving, that's really all that matters. And yeah. I, at the higher levels, when people kind of graduate into positions or, um, I don't want to say grandfather, but they kind of evolve into positions mm -hmm. and then they kind of stumble into this. Now I'm the big boss, but you just don't, you don't, you ain't ready. You ain't ready. Sugar. You Baby. can still get paid though. Yeah. So somebody, right. so the financial advisor is like, okay, so. Y'all are misaligned. And, and that misalignment caused a lot of Strife. friction because automatically we walked in a room, people were going to come to me. I am. Well, first the, of all. <laughs> no, what it really boiled down to. I go over to you too. <laughs> hey, I'm the friendly person. I'm the the communicator, the effective communicator. You know, I am kind of bold when I walk into the room. Confident. You right. have a corporate background, right. so you spoke. You have had hard conversations, right. big budgets, but hundred thousands of people to staff. Right. Yeah. And but if you have me to explain any kind of medical procedure can't do it i'm gonna fall back yeah so you know it's like the 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 fight was internal about who was getting the face time you know i'll say this christy one thing that i have found i have not figured this out and how to um overcome this other than therapy i don't know how to fix an energetic mis mismatch i don't know what I don't think you can. You know, it's like, it's, it's, I know everybody wants to make money. I think maybe one person articulates it a little bit better than the other, but when there is layers to this onion that you really can't peel, like you really can't fix it. So that's how relationships and partnerships will continue, become more contentious. And then it's kind of like you have two businesses kind of running. One person thinks they're running one thing. One person thinks they're running the other. You know yeah. I've been there. Yeah. You know I've been yeah. there. That's the story. Yeah. That's the reason yeah. why we're here. Yeah. Girl, that's stressful as fuck. So think about... And you're talking about millions, too. Okay, so think about being in a situation where you're making millions with a person. And because of that contention, that now there's animosity. And yeah. that animosity is turning into, like, the root cause of failure. Right? Mm. Um, mm -hmm. My business partner didn't like to read emails. What does that mean? I don't know. What does that mean? The How do you own a business and not read emails? The Who is it? would not check her emails. And I would always say, "How are you a CEO and you're not checking your emails?" Corporate, I check every email. I can't help it. That's the background that we come from too. <laughs> like don't, you, you just, don't miss an email. You just have to. And now these People know if I don't check my email, they know how to text me. I'm like, God damn it! I'm too. Right, but I know, I right. know my my. You know my. I gotta respond. I right, want the I money, gotta respond. And I'm the expert. And so. she missed a major 
email that turned into the spiral of our downfall. And I'll never forget, she looked at me and goes, but you blame me for this. And I wanted to say, Child. don't fucking read emails. Okay, so, yeah. so before we get ahead, because okay, you I'm know, sorry. this is- I went too far. <laughs> sorry, I'm emotional about it. I just so <laughs> sad. It's triggering. Ah, it's triggering. <laughs> so, but like, yeah, like, we're about to get there because- Okay, you guys got through the operating agreement. You wind up being partners. You signed the deal. COVID you know, happens. Co- and COVID happens. And who knew this staffing company could staff the damn people to do the damn swabs? <laughs> and who knew okay. that that was going to okay. be a thing? thing right? So, yeah. And I'll never forget. So, we're kind of struggling a little bit. I walked into, like, this room. It was, like, this conference. And I got us our first contract. Right. For uh, staffing. For, it... for this company. Okay. So, you know, yeah. I knew that I could activate a few buttons. Mm-hmm. I could walk in a room and come out with a deal. So, but COVID happened and it was like, uh-oh, what are we doing? We were in the middle of negotiating a million-dollar deal with this hospital. For, like, COVID nurses and... For nurses before COVID. Oh, yeah, before yeah. COVID. So you were already having big deals right yeah, before COVID. Yeah, so I was in the middle of negotiating something really big. And COVID happened and the company stopped calling. Because mm. at this point, now they're on television saying, we need nurses to come in. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God, what are we going to do? Get back to what I do best. Lord, I need your help. You need to pray. <laughs> what Jesus we gonna help. Do? I know you bring this far, need this far to leave me. Yeah. So um, we get a phone call. And one thing about it is that I'm not always going to say yes, and mm-hmm. then I'll figure out how later. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Duh. That's what we do. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Good thing you shoot first, a letter. Yeah. I'll think it out later. So, so yes, yes. yes. <laughs> and so that put us at the forefront of this COVID, this pandemic. Okay. Um, we had nurses and um, let me back up a little bit. So most of these were essential businesses that still had to run. Sure. Um, and they needed some kind of program process to keep their facilities open without sure. them having to shut down every other day mm-hmm. because of a COVID outbreak. Mm-hmm. So I said yes. And then I brought the team in and said, okay, now how do we do this? You know, let's sure. figure this out. And you figured it out. And we figured it out. Yeah. And because of that, um, in the beginning, when everything was happening and people were stuck in homes, I had staff out on the road going into different buildings. And um, I had Georgia, I had um, Illinois, Chicago, Chicago. Mm -hmm. I had California Mm -hmm. and several other states that were talking to us. Um, Some deals I didn't get. Sure. I talked my way right on out of it because we were expensive. (laughs) Oh, you you guys, you're expensive. We're expensive. Expensive We realized, like, oh, my God, we can charge, like, crazy money. During that time. During that time. Mm -hmm. Um, And probably the worst thing in that time is that I didn't have a really good contract um, negotiator, but I was a negotiator. You were doing, you were multi-purpose. You were Because normally you would not be the one that's like making contracts and negotiating, but this is what you wanted to do. You wanted to get the money, you know. We, and hired, the your, wrong co- we hired the wrong attorney. That's another thing we'll get to. Oh, yeah. So, um, I, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so COVID, uh, as we're, you're catching us up, partnership, we're rocking and rolling, you're getting contracts. Now this is even before COVID, but then when COVID happens, now it's exploded. It's exploded. And so you're getting contracts everywhere. But I know during that time you were making seven figures or more, like yeah. seven, eight yeah. figures. Yeah. It was yeah. a huge amount of money in a two week, two year time period. And I know that too, it wasn't all money you could keep because you had to pay your, yeah, st- yeah, yeah, your yeah. staff. Yeah. yeah. But um, talk us about that time in life. Oh my God. I was on the outside looking in. I remember. Oh, like I, I never forget when I looked at my account one day and I'm looking at like seven numbers. And Just that's cash my, in that's your account. My profit. Like, yeah. That's what I pay. Does, does anybody, does business owners, do you know how much, how it feels to have profit? Oh to have like, God. after you pay your shit off, <laughs> there is money in the goddamn bank and you can pay it as dividends every quarter or at the end of the year. Ooh. See, that's what I'm talking about. Ooh, 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 ooh. Bitch said she had seven figures in the bank profit. Profit. Come on. In there. Come on. Just like, and we're talking about a small business still. Yeah. Like you're like you're, you're like you're you're small in terms yeah. of you're operating pretty yeah. lean. Yeah. Right. You don't have an assistant. No. You don't no. have all no. this fancy no. stuff. No, I don't. Except clothes and trips. 
Uh, yeah, okay, we're okay, not going to show the person over here any of the other things except okay. for Africa, yeah, the yeah, traps, yeah, and yeah. Okay, but a part of that too is education because it wasn't until I stumbled, right, and I realized you need to have the right financial advisor and you Texas. need to have the right um, attorneys in place. And at that time when all that money was just sitting in the bank and I'm just staring at it, I'm staring at it. Girl. Girl, I was staring at you it. You should have hired me to be your financial advisor. I am not a financial advisor, by the way. Actually, I'm terrible at that stuff. But, honey, we could have had a good time. We could have had a good time. That's what you're supposed to make your money at least. You're going to take that money, we're going to run. You know? I would stare at the money and think that this is never going to end and I'm about to buy a jet. <laughs> of course, because that's the next logical step is to buy a, a, G, jet. a G5 jet. I, I would have fully supported you. Right. Like, as, as a business coach name, and friend. what I wanted to look like, yes. right? And so I never anticipated any problem. But I, these are, everything you just said is things we talk about constantly on the show. People that don't have contract negotiators. We don't have the right attorneys. We don't think about that because first, we don't even imagine if our business was so widely successful out of our dreams right. and we made the money that we want to make. Yeah. Are you even fucking pre- prepared? Most <laughs> of us are no. <laughs> and even me now today on the Bad Entrepreneur Show, I'm like, bitch, that's seven million dollars. I'd have taken that. <laughs> I'd have taken that money, honey, and oh spent all my that. God. So you did the smart thing, though. Like you didn't let. I know you let a lot of it sit, and you didn't let things get out of control. I didn't. All right. I so didn't. we're still in COVID now. We're still in COVID. C- catch us up. We're making money. Ooh, okay. Bills so are paid. So we are in COVID, but now we are like coming through vaccination time. Okay. Everybody going crazy about vaccines. Everybody going crazy. You need more needle punchers. Right. So I get a phone call, and the phone call was, can you provide us with um, at least 100 staff every single day for the next nine months? Yes. That's money. I can staff dogs. I can staff robots. What you need, I got it. That is money. Tell us the numbers again. How many people did they need? A hundred people per day for the next nine months. For a... For vaccination time. For vaccination time. It was the first piloted vaccination site. It was in Chicago at the United Center. Um, It was with FEMA. It was with... um, You was the one staffing that. Army Corps of Engineers. And I staffed the... um, Registrars, re- well, they registered people coming yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, all those people. All those people. They had wore little vests. They, they wore little vests. Because <laughs> the, they were at the uh, stadium. Yes. Uh, that, yes. What's it called? So we Mercedes did one Benz. In, we did the one in Chicago. Which so the, was equivalent, the, first one. the equivalent. So the equivalent of what was going on at the Mercedes Benz Stadium, yes. you staffed those people. We were the only minority company there. I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> like, give credit, shit, yeah. bitch. Come on. <laughs> I didn't realize, you know, we talk, we kiki and stuff like girlfriends, but I remember going to Mercedes Benz Stadium. I was like, wow, this is a big operation. So that's, you were doing stuff like that I was. up in Chicago. I was. Okay. So was. in the middle of the winter. Yeah, because I know the winter oh never the God. winter never ends up there. Yeah. So, but you so, were yeah. do, that's major. It was. So you feeling like amazing. how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling like you're on your okay. stride. So and... what was so amazing about that is the question was, can you get us a hundred people um, within the next week or so? I always say yes first. Of course. And figure Again. it out later. And, and we so. did. And, and, and did. <laughs> and did. And did. <laughs> and so um, I think what felt so good, and again, I said this is my ministry, um, I was staffing people who had never had, like, real jobs before, and I was paying so, them more money than they'd ever made. 20 bucks an hour. or if, Ever. Yeah. And there was a lot of money, to. There was a lot of available money, too, at that time. a lot of available time. money. Mm-hmm. And I had people crying to me every day, Aww. thanking me, mm-hmm. like, this is the best job I've ever had. Mm-hmm. This is the most money I've ever had. Mm-hmm. Thank you for providing our opportunity. Because I went into the community and gave the jobs to our people in the community. You were actually like going out and I, getting I the people. I was about it. to say, what did you wear? <laughs> <laughs> How did we do this? How did this look? I need details, but you know, you, no, you targeted. I did. I targeted, I targeted to, the community. To provide I targeted jobs. the community. And if I can say too, just like as a nod to both of us, because you know, there's always multiple missions, I think in your business. Mm-hmm. We want to be profit first. Right. Um, and you know, do what we love and create right. more time. Right, but right. this additional mission 
uh, providing jobs, yeah. uh, security. So even like for our agency at Microsite, our team of 30, they're W-2 yeah. people with 401ks now with yeah. medical benefits for right. them and their children. Um, you know, they may get a bon. I get bonuses. Like it is creating yeah. that. And they are 99% minorities or women. Hello? Hello? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> but so there's millions of do- I, yes. I, provide, I can say I provide a million dollars in jobs Isn't that amazing? to amazing. minorities and women yeah, every good. year. It feels amazing. And they're thriving. And so you, yeah. per- who know? people may have had the best Christmas ever because they were working this good job. I was told that. Yes! I was told that. Yes. I mean, it, it's sad. It's like second mission. Sh- Chicago's a crazy place, and I can't tell you how many days out of seven that somebody was losing a loved one. Like, it was crazy. Yeah. Uh, losing a loved one to gunshots or going to yes. prison or jail yes. or having all these, you know, issues. And they're like, this is the best thing that has ever ever happened to me and so you're being fed your people are being yeah. fed you know your your my ministry. your partner excuse me at the time your partner is in her zone yeah. you know you guys are just just rocking and rolling yeah. until uh, yeah that, <laughs> until that fateful day until and she didn't read that email and what was the email about it was about the process the way we were invoicing <sighs> Because you can't just keep checks and, like, not cash them and stuff like that, right? Like, Which she had a problem with, too. There's a day that... Okay, moving... Oh, okay, okay. okay. Right, we're going to go into that. We're so, not going to go that. Okay, so now, okay, so tell me what happened. Just because an okay. email is missed doesn't mean it should cost okay. you millions. Okay, so moving past COVID, so COVID is done, but we still got... Still a profitable company. Still profitable company. Mm-hmm. Um, we went into so let me just say this at one point in time i had over 300 employees working for me at one given time Mm -hmm. okay and we were contracting with this major nursing home um conglomerate okay and they operated in several different states sure and so we were in every one of their buildings here in georgia and at that time i had 75 employees working for me and you got to remember this is 24 hours of a day because medical is 24 hours so i'm feeling good because i'm making money in my sleep Mm -hmm. literally and i got people who are working for me and they're managing all of this but there was a email that was sent like six months prior that said, hey, your invoicing is not meeting our requirements. And I didn't see the email again until November. Six months later. And on top of And I'm sure there was that, probably numerous emails. It was. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, I know I, they gave you more than one shot. I didn't see it I know. until November. And I'm like, yo. And that wasn't your job either. No. To be looking at. Not your, her emails. I mean, yeah, or you know billables. Or, that's right, why because you, you yeah. technically, your operations. Yeah. I'm CEO. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. we our, our positions were mismatched. Yeah. And so, mm. because there was so much contention and mm. a sidebar, it was so bad that we had a therapist. Mm. <laughs> Y'all are some girls. <laughs> Y'all are so funny. You can't just punch each other and, and get it over with. Listen, <laughs> we, it, it came to that at least I'm twice. sure. So, you had a therapist. We had a and therapist. And Yama came we in. We had to get a <laughs> therapist and I'm like damn I'm having a therapist with my company to talk about how we can make more money what and the hell like come on it, it really pissed me off cause I'm like oh my god I don't we need are therapy. millionaires I just need to cash this fucking yeah. checks and do the invoice and write like, and hire the right are accounting millionaires. firm are you serious? We can't get along? But you know, too, most people, and um, on another episode, I'm talking to another millionaire, Ty McMath, who said when he got to the point where he was making all this money, he said he was depressed. He said that he could not enjoy it. Not you. No, 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 no. <laughs> that ain't my problem. No, no, no. But, like, he could not, um, like, they traveled and vacation and they did all that good stuff, but he had a hard time, like, truly sitting back saying, you know, I am a millionaire. This is some cool shit. Not enjoying it. So, again, Chrissy didn't have that problem, but it's possible your partner did. Right? Money Mm. mindset, money issues. I don't think that was my partner's problem. I think my partner's problem was that she watched me a little too much. Oh, yeah, we talked about that, yeah. She wasn't sitting in her own skin. And in her own greatness. zone, in her own greatness. in your own greatness. You're a doctor. Don't try to monitor mine. Yeah. I play a doctor on 
television. Like, Me all the time. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> well, you scared. actually are one. Like you're. Winning. I am. You're one. Yeah, you know, yeah. and she's very accomplished. And so I think the problem was is a lot of times we get in competition, and it's, it's not a about female that. thing. It's too. a female thing. Yeah. Girl, don't go don't you that. hate that? Don't you hate how I competitive do. we are? My mother experienced that a lot, and I've only had male partners. So I, I, I prefer just a whole male thing. partners. I don't know anything different at this point. 100% of my... I think Although, I, I think I there are issues there, too, because when you take a woman who is as strong as we are, that can also backfire, because <laughs> I've had that issue, too. Absolutely. And then the founder so. syndrome, and then all that. So y'all in therapy now. We in to, therapy. While you're making millions. Uh, what the hell is the Like, who is... Yeah. And so I really feel like it was one of those things, like, oh, really? Y'all want to sit here and be going through this? So well, your attitude wasn't even, like, open to that? Because it's like, I got what? to a point where I disconnected. I actually said, fuck it. I hit the fuck it button. It's okay. <laughs> Sometimes you have to hit the fuck it button. <laughs> and I, but and it, be okay with it. But it wasn't a good thing because I, I hit the fuck it button and then I said, I'm making money. It don't matter. So tell us how, how, how large was this problem of the improper invoicing because that's really what broke it, the company. It cost us our, Everything. almost cost us our company. It cost us one point three million dollars in money that you've already paid out to people yes mm -hmm. and i watched those seven mm -hmm. almost eight figures mm -hmm. that was sitting in the bank sitting cute it was real cute i watched it disappear overnight christy christy let's drink to that christy mm, mm, mm. Uh, christy <sighs> Did we Christy, drink all the wine? no. Well, here's a little swallow. Come on, girl. You deserve it. You deserve it. Just get a little taste. I'm telling you, like overnight. So my multi-million dollar loss was over years, which is a little bit harder to swallow because I was sitting in it for so long. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, yours was you know hard work, success, profit. And you actually just didn't spend it because you were a good steward of your mo of your money. Nah, okay. And you, uh, yeah, right. I'm like, damn it. Why didn't we? Why didn't we talk about this? We could have set up a holding I mean, account. We could set up a, a thing in Croatia. A trust Listen, in Croatia. I know. Oh, we <laughs> tell you 50 million things uh, I could have done. Oh, right, but. right. But you know, you you did that, and, and and it had to. Your money had to back up the company, basically, right? Otherwise, I would have nurses probably Unpaid. on the six o'clock news talking about picketing si picket signs. <laughs> they didn't pay this, us. this woman They're with horrible. the black hair right. and the Louis Vuitton. She doesn't. She's, she's rich. <laughs> Listen, honey, here's your, I don't want none of the problem. I don't need none of and, that. And I'm grateful to God you were in the position to cover that. Because this is like money that needed to be paid out or it was supposed to be paid out, but you never received it. No. People still need to get paid on Friday. That's what the thing, when that, when that fucking business is on your neck and you are responsible <sighs> for other families at this point. Yeah. Because you... Call it what it is. That's your title. You the boss. Ain't nobody above a CEO or a founder or a partner. So it's your. It's a contract that you've made with these people. Yeah. So yeah. And you feel responsible. And you. It's up to you to fix it. And guess what? You the last one to get paid. That's always how it is. If I, you get paid. If you paid. get paid. Hmm. Jesus. Ooh, I need more wine. I know. I, need more I, ran wine. Of, I ran out of wine. <laughs> and we're running out of time. Okay. 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 okay, okay. So okay, now. So now. Sit you, up, sit up. And my hair keeps slipping. Okay, so you got this, uh, it was a preventable situation it was. that because of all the things, emails not checked, invoices not submitted, Recipe for disaster. we're 1.2 or 1.7? 1.2. 1.3. 1.3 million all that. Mm -hmm. that you could not recover. Yes. And then what happened? We had to file for bankruptcy. And that's, that, that was the end of the staffing. How hard was that for you, Christy? Or was it a relief? It was both. Mm-hmm. It was a relief because I felt like I had an opportunity to get out and didn't. do my own, and I didn't. And it was heartbreaking because, you know, we were so successful. But I had to be honest with myself. I didn't know what I was doing. I know. And it was like— But you needed to learn. I did. And look, if you if I'm following the story correct correctly— Fool me once. That's when, um, in the very first staffing situation with those two guys, you know, like, come on, Christy, come with me. You didn't. Okay? Fool me once. Shame on me. Mm -hmm. Fool me twice. Mm -hmm. Okay? Where you're like, I could should have pulled out, and I didn't. I should have done my own thing, and I didn't. 
right? And you mm-hmm. learned. Mm-hmm. You're currently, you're coming out of bankruptcy. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You're still the same shining star that you always were. You never mm-hmm. really needed a partner, right? Mm-hmm. But you learn. Mm-hmm. So now, third time. Like, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. So now, what are we doing? You, the business was broken. The money was spent, Was had to pay um, for people. It was your money, mm-hmm. but still. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So how are you feeling? How are, what are, what are, what's happening now um, coming out of the broken? I am feeling um, empowered. Mm-hmm. I think the biggest thing that I learned from all of this is that I can do it. I did it once. I can do it again. And you're and single momming it up too. I'm single momming it up. Come on, up, come on, mom. Know? I'm like, you can reinvent yourself as many times as you need to. Um, I'm a lot more confident in myself. I think mm-hmm. one of the things is that I felt like, so when I was in the music industry, I started out and I was in a group. And people wanted me. Story, I forgot. Uh, <laughs> people wanted me to be a solo artist, and I always felt like I needed somebody. I can't do this by myself. Yeah. And I think at this point in life, I'm realizing, like, girl, you got it. You this got is this. you. You got this. It took that many stories and that many businesses <laughs> and that many people, where ultimately you were the talent, you were the skill, you were the always. the person. Mm-hmm. So. This is one of those scenarios when someone's like, hey, I got a business idea. I'm going to start. <laughs> I'll be like, yes. Like, this is, this is, it seems like a perfect alignment. And you've been through enough road bumps to have it so at least somewhat figured out by now. Yeah. Right. And um, I'm glad you didn't quit. Yeah. Because the bankruptcy probably would take me out. It would probably put me in the grave. Like, do you know what, Almost Lord? did. <laughs> Almost did. Did. And did. Yeah. But. Mental health challenging and everything. Listen, I got to a point and I had to tell my partner because I'll never forget. She was like, let's just give up. And that's just not really who I am. Mm-hmm. Giving up is something I don't know how to do. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I wish I did. And I'm mm-hmm. like, God, why you make me like this? But <laughs> yeah. um, I'm like, Nah. You know, we're going to figure this out. And I can't tell you, I've cried a bucket of tears. I know. And I was like, I'm tired of crying. And we actually, we had to file the bankruptcy in order to sue the company that owed us this money. Yeah, because you were outside of their window of time. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And at a later time, we could talk about contracts and what that means. And I'm going to have you back on because I like just in terms of staffing. Yeah, she, she all right. She can come back. Like it's fine. <laughs> She's fine. Uh, but that there, there's a lot of elements of good, solid business structure that you know that you've yeah, been privy to yeah, because yeah. you've been the puppet master for it yeah, or been like yeah. on right beside it. So and I want to learn all that stuff. And I plan on being truly successful again ten times over. So mm-hmm. you know, I'd love to share what this looks like on the other end because now you know I'm a lot more confident, and it's not out of desperation. Yeah, or, you know, it's like out of confidence that I'm moving on to this next chapter. And so I'm excited about what's in front of me. Amen. And I know so much more than I did before. Mm-hmm. And again, I'm, I'm believing in me. And you're still doing staffing. I'm still You're still staffing. in staffing. And you've worked with different business sizes on the corporate side, yeah. then on the small business side. So you have the perfect blend yes. of both worlds to be able to get that multiple millions back into your bank yes. account very quickly, might I add. Yes. So the bankruptcy is, you know, it was a year ago. Yeah. So what are we up to now? Tell me about your company. So I started a company called Higher Med International. And mm-hmm. the focus um, is bringing in nurses from other countries countries um, Mm -hmm. to supplement the staffing shortage that we have, as well as any other medical, uh, you know, um, entities. Are we still under major shortages right now? I know overall the workforce is is squeezed. Everything is. But this is what I had to realize. I know staffing. Staffing is my business, so Mm -hmm. I can staff anything. Mm -hmm. Um, So what I'm doing is not only expanding it from medical, but then embracing everything that I've done under the sun. Sure. Because staffing is a process. Yeah, yeah. It's a process. Yeah. Um, And so I'm selling the process, not necessarily. Consulting. Yes, consulting. Yeah. And so that's where I am. That's where I thrive. Staffing is my ministry. I know. Providing employment to people and opportunities is what I do. And helping some anyone who is experiencing staffing difficulties 
that's what my job is to figure out how to staff you in a way that allows you to be successful and you don't have to worry about that. Oh, Christy. Okay, okay. So we're, we're going to get out of here. Girl, this is the longest episode I ever done. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> Such great conversation, though. You know, following your story and being on the, on the outside, you know, as just a fan, I love how you went from broken to being completely rebuilt and you are back on the rise again. Girl, you did this. Like, mm. I know, hopefully this is the third and last time, but guess what? Even if it ain't, it, it, you are going to be on the upside of it anyway. You're going to always come out through the fire. Don't even smell like smoke. Okay. I got one. <laughs> what, is there any one thing from the rock bottom moments you've had from, you know, losing a business? Is there any one thing you want to share with a small business owner that's struggling that okay. you know that, that is a I'm going to tell you? you to read a book that to me, I was having some amen moments. Okay. And it really helped me understand who I am and what it takes to get to the next level. And the name of the book is Relentless. Oh my God, you read Tim, Tim Grover. Yeah, the uh, basketball uh, coach. I'm uh, a sports girl. Did I give you that? I feel like I gave you that book. Or did we, are we just the living parallel lives That's again? It. So, oh, like yes. we have three copies of that book in oh our my house. God. He gives it to his athletes. Great book. Girl. And then he has the second one that's called yes. Winning. Yes, yes. Okay, so I like to put something in my ear, drive, and I needed something to just fill my spirit. Mm -hmm. And when I read that book, mm. It told me who I was. Are you a cleaner? What, what are you? I'm a cleaner. You're a cleaner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a cleaner. I'm a cleaner. For sure, for I'm sure. A it's a great book. And you know, it made me understand that I don't have to make an excuse or shy away from being a cleaner, being who I am. Mm -hmm. I'm somebody who I'm all in mm -hmm. and I'm going to figure out, so show me your problem. Mm -hmm. I promise you I will find your solution. So I would say to any entrepreneur, read that book um, Great book, and it has nothing to do with entrepreneurship. Nothing at all. Just a fantastic book from an amazing coach, where you can like you know identify your certain strengths, yeah. and and on your team yeah. how to pull them strengths out of people mm. that relentless. The girl, you done dropped so I didn't expect that. I thought you were gonna say fast and pray. Well, I thought you were gonna say Everybody, where they can find you, please. You can find me www. Oh, sorry. Hey, hey. <laughs> find me here. Um, <laughs> HireMedInternational.com. So much more to come. Yes. Um, rebuilding. So I yeah. look forward to sharing. You know where this journey takes me. You know I love you. This I is great. You, this is mom. great. You're going to be back. You're going to be back. So um, we're going to continue this conversation with Christy. Y'all, make sure you please follow her. Go to her website. Check her out. Um, thank you again for your time today. I want you to like, share, subscribe, follow the Bad Entrepreneur Podcast everywhere that podcasts are available. And hop on over to Instagram because you know I'm nutty over there at I am Lauren Powers. Thank you again, baby. I will You're see so y'all next time. Peace. <laughs> no podcast, podcast. After all, we can't run from my past. Let's talk about it. Bad entrepreneur podcast. Let's talk about it. The bad entrepreneur podcast.